Okay, YouTubers, anti-nuke activists, Patrick Penry here. I'll try to make this one short. This is from the NRC Freedom of Information Act documents pertaining to Fukushima. This is from a document that is being circulated around March 24th, 2011. Uh, what, 13 days? Yes, after the meltdown. Okay, it's never good at math. Here we go. Here's the, let me bring it to the page we want to talk about. Okay. Mind blowing. From the 24th, Protective Measures Team identified need to update the source term for modeling. In other words, the amount of emissions and number of sources of emissions, they say, hey, we got to update it. Maybe we know a little more for modeling. A MELCOR Trans Pacific model needs to be worked. The MELCOR, short for melt core, core melt. Trans-Pacific, obviously, across the Pacific, model needs to be worked. Shows about 4.5 rem iodine to children. Interagency agreed on a model last night. We have requested NARAC, they do the modeling, to make changes showing 70% core damage versus the 33% damage assumed previously. So they're bumping it up. We are trying to ensure that the over-conservatism errors in the 4.5 rem does not get issued. And so what I get out of that last bit is this is a very, cons they're being over-conservative on this. They said, let's be super conservative, and even so they come with 4.5 rem. But now they're saying, look, we need to remodel this because it's showing 70% core damage versus the 33% that led us to the 4.5 rem. That's what I'm getting out of it. So here, I mean, clearly, folks, and this kind of discussion is throughout the documents. Within a week, two weeks afterwards, they're talking about plenty about REM doses to children in the United States, in Alaska, Midway, so on and so forth. And I've shown these documents time and time again where they're discussing doses directly to children in the United States. So here we go one more time. The ultra-conservative says 4.5 REM iodine to children. They say, hey, let's rework that model showing 70% core damage versus the 33, and let's do it again. And who knows what they came up with? Because just a second ago, I showed you, and let me back up right here, where if, it, if anything's really, really, really incredibly serious measurement or whatever, you don't get to see it. Right here, look. It says, in-country team has struck up a relationship with NISA rep, representative, who provided him a variety of strip chart recorders, data points, etc., being translated now. Extremely sensitive information. Tight hold. Redaction, redaction, redaction. See what I'm saying? So when the measurements get serious, when it gets to serious discussion, they just redact the whole thing. I mean, and we need to really go even further and see what's behind this redaction. But to do that, we have to build a case of what we have, find a new Department of Justice that will actually pursue the case, and then under questioning, we can see, you know, what leads where what leads where, and, and also, like I say, the judge can allow you to look at that redacted material in a court case if, you know, if it's a righteous move and they have to do it. A judge has before allowed that. So don't think just because it's redacted, we're never going to get to see what's in there. We need the right court case and to persuade a judge to let us see what it says in there completely. But nevertheless, what we are allowed to see right here, folks, wow, this is just huge. 4.5 rem iodine to children that's in the United States, a trans-Pacific model, and again, just proof that even on the 24th, they're passing around a document talking about that, making changes. They know how bad it is, and it, they never did issue rainwater warnings. They should still now, because 800 plus days in, emissions are ongoing, and we're still a week, what, about eight days after that last set of emissions from Unit 3. Yes, things spiked over here, spiked in Tampa, and cut my vacation short, right? So it's still ongoing. These models, all of them are so incredibly downplayed, folks, because they're modeled over four to five days. The, the longest one I saw could have been for up to 30 days. They didn't state specifically, but only 30 days had elapsed since the event. And that was saying 10% of Chernobyl. And that was, gosh, man, that's just, that's a sickening downplay of it, right? But even if you take that 30 days as 10%, well, we're 800 plus days in. We're two years in. That 10 percent has been, we're two, 300 percent past Chernobyl now because emissions have never stopped. The fires, the smoke, the steam, the cracks in the ground, right? Kept going on long enough, folks. 4.5 rim, iodine, two children, trans-Pacific, that means across the Pacific to here, okay? And again, NRC and DOE and all these guys, busted, man, busted. You guys knew? 
You covered up multi-agencies. Thousands of these guys are involved, man. It's a big can of worms, isn't it? Patrick Penry, over and out.